Now this is the part that absolutely smoked me. I had no idea that this was gonna happen. Once you add the other pastel gene, making it a super pastel, they become, it is amazing that we finally, after all these years, produce this crazy little monkey right here, and it's a brand new gene. And hey, unless you've been living under a rock, you know probably what I'm about to talk about. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. And I am gonna start out with something that I am absolutely excited about. Of course, remember those purple snakes that I cut in the egg? Well, guess what? They have hatched out and Ooh, doggy. They exceeded my expectations. Really amazing clutch here. Again, this was a lemon blast. I was bred to a black pewter cypress. Now the black pewter cypress is actually a pastel, a black pastel, and then a cypress. Some amazing things in here. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this one right here, which is just a lemon blast cypress. Now that cypress gene cleans stuff up, makes some kind of dorsal striping. So this is a pastel, it's a pinstripe, and it's a cypress. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is just one step further than this. This is actually a super blast cypress so again it's a super pastel because the pewter was a pastel and of course the lemon blast has pastel in it I don't want to confuse you guys too much but the fact it's just one more layer of pastel compared to that first one now this one here is actually a black pastel so it is the black pastel that's in the black pewter gosh I feel like I'm talking circles here and it is a cypress and that's got that super uber clean dorsal stripe on it this thing is absolutely ridiculous so I was super excited to produce this one then we have have actually a couple black pastels here this one looks like it's a black pastel cypress and this one just looks like a normal black pastel so that gives you the idea of what normal black pastels which are just the building blocks for the pewter black pastel cypress animal so this is like the, the founder stock genes of that one then we've got a couple woo doggies for sure this is crazy these are actually lemon blast black pastel cypresses, okay? Now, I've produced the black pastel lemon blast before, which would be called really a pewter blast, actually, and they don't look anything like this. That cypress sheen turns them purple like that. That's what gets you these amazing purple snakes. Oh my gosh, but again, these ones have some pattern to them. Now, this is the part that absolutely smoked me. I had no idea that this was gonna happen. Once you add the other pastel gene, making it a super pastel, they become patternless purple snakes snakes or lavender snakes. I mean, you can, you can tell the difference between the one that is a super pastel that has no pattern and the pastel that has some pattern in it. I am blown away by this. Again, theoretically, genetically, this shouldn't have happened. This is something that just when you mix the right genes together, they start canceling each other out. And by the way, I'm going to talk about some crazy genes in a minute here, but I wanted to share with you this clutch first. Unbelievable. True world's first purple snakes like this. I couldn't be more excited. What a great clutch. I mean, it is beyond my wildest dreams that I would have had something like this when I got these eggs two months ago. But now let's move on to something that is truly mind bending. Now this is not only an adorable little tiny ball python that I absolutely love, but this has an amazing story behind it. This is actually a brand new morph too, but the difference is, is with the other purple snakes, we actually bred for that type of mutation. We didn't know the outcome was going to be the way it was, but this snake popped up. It's a genetic thing on its own, but there is a little bit of a back history to it too. This thing is the first one that's ever hatched out and has lived, and I am beyond excited about it. I can't wait to see what this turns into when it gets bigger, but let's go ahead and jump about 15 years ago into the past. <laughs> And way back then, it was really about producing animals that were pretty simple, like pinstripes. Pinstripes were a newer morph, so people were loving it. So I literally bred a pinstripe to a normal with some pretty surprising results. I remember cutting the eggs, much like I do now, and there was a couple bright orange animals with purple stripes in it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is absolutely incredible. Had no idea what was going on with the breeding, to be honest with you. But unfortunately, with those two babies, they were really frail, real small, and they never made it out of the egg and died and I thought that maybe there was a chance I could reproduce it down the road. I bred that female several years after and never reproduced them again out of that female. Several years later, you know, there was a lot of production going on with all kinds of different mutations, even stuff like lemon blast here, pastel pinstripes. So no longer was I looking to produce normal pinstripes as a really major player, but sure enough, three more babies were in the egg again from a pinstripe to, I'm not even sure what the breeding was, but those three babies looked the same. They were bright orange, they had purple flecking on them. They were incredible and sadly enough, they didn't make it out of the eggs either. So once again, that elusive project just kind of disappeared right from underneath me. 
Lucky, the Amazon tree boa is such an amazing animal. I tell you what, it is so awesome. I love this thing. Of course, it's a tiger Amazon, which is actually a color and pattern mutation. And he is definitely a feisty monkey. But you might be asking, why do I have Lucky, the Amazon tree boa out right now? And I'm just kind of making movement with my hand over here so he doesn't key on my face, if you know what I mean. The truth is, I want to talk to you guys about something relatively serious. And hey, unless you've been living under a rock, you know probably what I'm about to talk about. And that is course is the Amazon fires. This is a really serious thing. I mean, you think about an animal like Lucky here and the fact that that's the habitat that this guy actually is in. And right now, this is burning like crazy. As a matter of fact, it is twice the size of the record burn ever. Wildfires are part of nature. As a matter of fact, it can be a really good thing. It brings life, you know? That's absolutely the case. But when you start seeing record wildfires all around the world, then you start having to ask yourself a question, what is going on? This is actually tiger lily, the Brazilian rainbow boa, and another animal that this species is going to be affected by these wildfires. And again, you know, I'm going to be totally honest with you here. It's going to get a little deep as I'm talking about this topic because it's a little bit confusing. But the truth is, yes, tragedy, 100% tragedy, but I always look at this as a little bit of a positive. And the reason I say it's not a positive in the fact that I want the rainforest to burn down, what I'm trying to say is that this brings awareness to a problem that we definitely have. And awareness is probably the best thing that can happen. Happen, and oftentimes it takes a huge tragedy for the world to start to pay attention. Little update on colubrid babies that are hatching. What do we have here? This was actually a head creamsicle scaleless bred to a head creamsicle scaleless. You can see the little creamsicle babies right here, which are absolutely beautiful, of course, but uh, weirdly enough, doesn't look like we have any creamsicle scaleless, but we do have a couple scaleless that I'm going to put in the water here and see what they look like. Look at that, how stunning that is. Absolutely gorgeous. It looks like we've got a few scaleless as well. Well, all right, <laughs> you guys know, you know the drill what's about to happen, right? It's about to become a crazy mess of worms flying all over the place. But take a look at that scaleless corn snake right there. Hoo hoo, doggy. Uh oh. Come on, little bugger. Don't go. See, this is what happens. It's like a bad apple, right? As soon as one starts to cruise around, they all just decide to go, all right, make a break for it. So I'm going to do my best I could do. Get, 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 get in there. Stop biting me. Okay, I'm going to do the best I could do. Make sure there's no heads in there. Okay, so that's number one, guys. Next one is actually a het ghost scaleless bred to a ghost scaleless. And it looks like we have one little scaleless baby in here that is an anry. As a matter of fact, we'll just go ahead and plop him in the water real quick. And we'll We'll see what he looks like now this one does still have some scalation on it which changes it just a little tiny bit but still really cool so that is an anery scalus that would actually be head for ghost and then we just have some anery corn some normal corns and some other type of stuff that of course are all head for scalus and then the last clutch i want to take a look at real quick are these look at how gorgeous they are of course this is a pueblin milk snake <laughs> i tell you what they are crazy little dudes right now too oh look at it trying to bite my finger what are you doing hey that doesn't feel good what the heck is this little dude doing? Stop it. Oh my gosh. And again, you know, all these eggs looks like they hatch. So guess what? I'm going to just go like this, start going around, and it's going to be like the movie's Tremors. All these snakes are going to start popping out. Come on, little guys. Woo. I got snakes all over the place, but you can see there's a whole bunch. Okay, I'm in trouble, guys. All right, I got to set. I got to do something here. Give me one second. Oh my gosh. Get out of here. Holy moly. Snakes are everywhere. I can't keep them in. Oh my gosh. Oh, ow, ow, it's biting me. Ah. Okay. You guys know that I'm not going to get through an entire uh, showing off of baby clubbers without baby snakes all over the place. So uh, that's all that hatched for today. Okay, back to the present. And that's right, this little monkey hatched out and it's the exact same thing that happened all those years ago. But now there are some more genetics going on because it was a pastel crystal bred to a female pinstripe. But the genes that are in here have nothing to do with that other than the fact that because it's a crystal, it has to be either a Mojave or a special. So this little girl is actually a pinstripe and either a Mojave or a special. My kind of feelings would be it's probably a special because a pinstripe and a Mojave look very different, obviously, even though this is a kind of new mutation. But what 
mutation is it really? So now it's gonna get a little bit complicated and, and to start, uh, I think I'm gonna go grab an albino ball python. So I'm gonna do the best I can do to try to explain this or at least what I believe is going on. So when you have an albino, it's a recessive mutation. If you were to say breed that to a normal or a het, on that protein where the albino is not producing melanin, basically the other animal is producing the same type of protein saying to produce melanin, right? That's why when you breed an albino to a normal, you don't get albinos because the other animal is producing melanin on the same allele. So basically what happens, there's something that's called a null gene. And the null gene is basically just the opposite animal saying don't produce melanin or allow that other animal to produce the albinism or whatever that recessive mutation is. You guys might be starting to ask yourself, but Brian, it's not an albino and pinstripes aren't a recessive mutation. What I'm trying to say is there's a chance that some pinstripes in the case of the at least three that I've had over the last 15, 18 years, were carrying a trait that was potentially recessive, but not in the way that a normal recessive gene works. And for whatever reason, those three opportunities were bred to males that had the gene that basically said, go ahead and let it produce that weird orange snake. It's kind of like parthenogenesis. If you guys don't know what that means, it's basically when a female can reproduce itself like little clones without a male. Now, a lot of times parthenogenic babies oftentimes don't survive because they might have kinks, they might be weak, whatever, much like what's going on with the gene that I just produced. It's been a little bit since I've updated you on these guys. Of course, these are my gargoyle geckos from Tiki's Geckos. This is actually a Deadpool line and a Dracula line. Really red animals, absolutely amazing. I think that Tiki's Geckos red animals are some of the best in the business for sure. And again, Dracula and Deadpool line. I'm definitely gonna be getting some more of these, but we're raising up a ton of gargoyles and stuff like that. Again, you guys know that I'm building out that new Caledonia, or really just gecko room, because we'll probably have some Europlades in there as well. So I'm super excited to have a bunch of new animals up to size, but I just had to update you on these ones because they are absolutely rippers. This is a snake that I rarely show and I absolutely love it. Of course, this is called a sunbeam snake from Southeast Asia or a Xenopeltis unicolor. <laughs> absolutely weird animal. Uh, definitely one of the most iridescent snakes that you'll ever see. I mean, that rainbow with these guys are unbelievable when you look at it. Such a glossy, beautiful snake. Again, they're <laughs> wild and they definitely live in the mud and rice paddies down in Southeast Asia, Philippines, Indonesia, all over Southeast Asia. So these guys are really unusual and I actually got this animal because I thought it'd be really great over at the Reptarium. Then I fastly realized that uh, they just basically hide all the time. So I didn't think it would be that cool. The other thing that happens, and trust me, if you had smell-o-vision right now, you would know is that these guys love to musk. Whew, I tell you what. It's stinky, it's almost like garlic. As a matter of fact, I think Eric actually calls this animal garlic because it smells like a garlic clove. I mean, what an awesome, cool animal though. Absolutely love it, just thought I'd share it with you guys. But the truth is, guys, this is a global problem. This isn't just about the Amazon, although it's great that that's brought the, all this awareness. You know, Siberia, we have a huge issue there. There's been 21,000 miles burned. We've got Greece, 46,000 miles. Bolivia itself has 1.6 million acres burned. I mean, even here in America, Alaska has record wildfires this year. And of course, we know that California last year had the worst wildfires on record as well. What I'm trying to say is that this is a global issue. And certainly the problem is the way we're taking care of the environment, right people? I mean, climate change is real. For those of you that don't believe it, you guys are crazy and I'm sorry to be so harsh. But the fact is, is that this climate change is causing these types of issues. And that's the awareness that I wanna kinda of start a conversation. I don't have the answers. I wish I did have the answers, but I wanna start a conversation with you guys right now. Down in the comments, tell me what your thoughts are about this. What can we do? What is the solution to this problem? And when it comes to Amazon, of of course, that's a major issue right now. And I love the fact that now it's finally being picked up by major media and stuff like that, and we're all thinking about it. But you know, there's a lot of like, donate to this, donate to that. The truth is that I'm thinking to myself, I would love to do that. I would love to donate money to this cause, but there's a couple things I wanna know. Number one, I'm not sure who to donate to, because you know, a lot of these places where you donate, maybe the money's not actually going where you want. And the other thing is, even if they have the money, what are they gonna do? Do they have an actual plan for that money to save the rainforest? I don't know, I'm not saying they don't, 
don't, maybe they do. Maybe there's some great organizations out there. Let me know in the comments what you guys know about those organizations, who we should donate to, and I'll put links in the description to wherever we should. But as of now, I'm not exactly sure what to do about this. But I do think that the positive to take out of this is that we can start the conversation, not just about the Amazon, but we can start the conversation about this global epidemic that is going on right now, which is our treatment of the planet that is causing these historic temperatures, tsunamis, hurricanes, wildfires. These are things we've got to talk about, people. And again, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer because the truth is, sometimes these types of situations are great from the standpoint that it starts us really starting to actually make a difference in the future. And if we start making the difference now, maybe there will be a future for this planet. So let me know in the comments what you guys think, what you're going to do about it, what we can do together, and how we can continue beyond the wildfires in the Amazon to continue to have a lot of focus on this topic of climate change and how it's affecting the future of our planet. Now obviously this guy's about half the size of a normal baby but seems to be very strong, great tongue response, moving around really good, so I have high hopes for it. Now my thoughts would be if my theory is right, which I hope it is, that this will probably be a recessive mutation that is separate from the pinstripe gene or possibly even being carried in some pinstripes. I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, it is amazing that we finally after all these years produce this crazy little monkey right here and it's a brand new gene. Again, this isn't a combo animal. Yes, it has a couple different genes in it, but it's not bred for stuff. I mean, it's kind of the first one of its kind, and I'm not the only one that's produced it. There's actually at least two more people, Kevin over at NERD and a guy named Ted Lasicola had the exact same experience with pinstripes producing these bright orange animals with some purple markings on them, and unfortunately they had the same results that I had. None of them actually hatched and lived, so this is the very first baby of its kind, and let's hope that it survives, and eventually we can prove it out and see what the heck is going on with it. I tell you what, that was incredible that we finally hit that animal. I've been wanting to produce that snake for the last like 18 years. If you guys like that, there is another egg cutting video with some cool odds, an entire playlist of egg cutting. And if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button over here, post notifications on, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.